So I wanted to show my little project red setup I did for automated polyethylene. Here's where the oil comes in. It gets distilled into sulfuric uh, naphtha that then gets uh, desulfurized here with this chemical reactor, which then passes on to this chemical reactor, which then steam cracks it, which then goes on to the distillery. But then uh, if I need to, I can store some ethylene here. Um, and then I can go, since I'm turning it into polyethylene right now, it gets sent over here where it gets oxygenated and then dumped into this tank. And I can store it here in the tank or I can go ahead and put it into a diamond tank that I use to move around. So as we can see here, we can watch the the request. There goes an empty. Here comes some more, uh, looks like some more, yeah, some more oxygen. And, and the steam cells are coming in um, from the other room where I have some other parts of the setup. There goes a uh, the garbage that comes out of the distillery. And you can see the little little uh, little can zipping around everywhere. It's kind of kind of fun to watch. Um, so on the outside of the room over here, I've got this is where the hydrogen sulfide comes in to be turned into sulfuric acid. So when the desulfurization completes, it comes in over here. Over here is some compressors that make oxygen cells and nitrogen um, that I use for my EBF. Here's the hydrogen and oxygen tanks. Um, right now I've got the steam stored over here right now, but I've got a, a, a canner that I'm going to set up and put a crafting chip on it so that way when it needs steam it can just drop in a drop in a cell and fill the cell up and then supply it back to the network without having to uh, store a bunch of them. Um, I think that's going to be right here. So you can see here it's already part of the network. Um, it's already set up, it just needs to be added to the network. So let's go ahead and do that. What we need is a crafting chip. So we'll need the crafting chip. I need a routed interface pipe. So with the routed interface pipe on top of this, it should connect to the rest of the network. Okay. And now we can take this crafting chip. We're going to need a uh, empty cell. So we're going to tell it empty cell for steam cell. So we can throw that in there. And now when someone requests the steam cell, wants to see once this here runs out, it'll uh, start crafting it. So I want to make sure that this here is actually... I don't know if I can set the priority on that, but uh, we'll see what happens if it, if it works correctly or not, but it should. So over here, this looks like this is filling up. It's going to get to around uh, 12,000 and then run another cycle. And you can see even down here, it uh, looks like this is mostly done. The empty cell here should get pulled out in a few seconds. So that's what, it, that's what it looks like. So to look at the uh, context of the, of the PR setup itself, this here is the first chemical reactor. It's going to need hydrogen and it's going to pull out the empty cells. So there's an extractor chip. We have it set to blacklist. And so with the blacklist empty, it'll pull out everything. Um, and then we have a stock keeper chip to keep four hydrogen cells in there. It only needs two for the operation, but I keep two in there extra because it takes a little while sometimes between the request and the completion. Similar thing in this case, we have the extractor chip to blacklist that's going to pull out the empty cells and send them back to the overflow and a stock keeper chip to keep four steam cells in. Um, this distillery will, when it uh, runs the, the steam crack naphtha, it produces an output of tiny carbon uh, dust and so we have to have a pipe up here to go ahead and extract the tiny pile of carbon dust. Um, that I actually send to a trash can. I'll show you that in a second. Um, and then this last interface pipe here, it extracts the empty cells from the oxygen and it stocks the oxygen cells. It stocks seven because it needs quite a few per each ethylene cycle. So I just have it keep seven so that way it keeps up to date. It should actually be pulling that. I don't know. It's taking a little long to pull that. Uh, a chip. I don't know. There may be some 
network lag on that. I don't know what's going on there. But anyways, it should uh, extract it eventually. Over here is where the uh, I stuck a trash can here with a uh, hopper up above it. And a hopper with a redstone signal will not uh, transfer items. That way I can keep track and see you know, if the right items are going into the hopper or not. And here's the interface pipe. It's set to basically respond. In this case, it's going to be a whitelist to tiny piles of carbon dust. So when the extractor pulls it out and puts it on the network, the responder says, oh yeah, I'll take the tiny pile of carbon dust and then it'll accept it and then it'll dump it. Uh, when I flip the switch here, they'll start dropping them into the, the trash can. So this other setup over here, this is just a diesel setup. So the right side, um, centrifuges heavy oil out of uh, oil sands. Uh, distills it and does the same similar processing steps of desulfurizing the heavy fuel and then here it sits in the mixer waiting for the light field to come. I don't have any uh, processing going right now because I've got a few thousand buckets of uh, of diesel so I don't need any right now but here it's a similar setup. Now, now on the oxygen and the hydrogen gas cells we use what's called a crafting chip. So the crafting chip when someone wants a hydrogen cell the crafting chip says, I can provide that. And then the matrix on the, the front side of the matrix, it pulls an empty cell to create that hydrogen cell. And then a uh, similar thing here for the uh, oxygen. It pulls an empty cell to make an oxygen cell. But it also actually responds to oxygen cells as well. Because um, when the centrifuges make oxygen or when the... Uh, When the uh, electrolyzer makes oxygen, it also sends those cells over to here, and, and they get uh, dumped out, and then they get extracted, extracted and sent back over to the overflow bin over here. And the this right here is my centrifuge setup. This compressor here requests five cells, and then it, instead of actually sending it back to the network, since it's only going one direction, I just have it push over to here. So as you can see, it's kind of wasteful on cells, but uh, it, it's good enough for me. I mean, it's I've got plenty of cells. Uh, since I automated the rest of the network, there's not all these cells of hydrogen and um, sitting around and that kind of stuff it makes it uh, a lot more efficient. So here, the, the nitrogen just goes straight over to here, and then the oxygen... Um, <laughs> Funny thing, the compressed cell has an O2 on it, but it's actually just a compressed cell. But the oxygen cell gets extracted and it gets sent out to the uh, the oxygen tank over here. So that gives you an idea of some of the stuff you can do with Project Red. It's a little bit expensive in terms of uh, some of the higher tech chips require MV uh, MV circuits. The lower tech chips require uh, LV circuits. But once you get your uh, circuit assembler set up, it, it makes life a lot easier. Um, Instead of having to have, you know, 64 sticking, uh, you know, 64 hydrogen cells here every time, you know, that kind of thing. Or, or like here, before I was having like 64 empty cells. When the stuff came out, it, it dropped down and got pushed over to here to, to the mixer. And then the mixer would have to pull it back out again. Or I was, I was just manually pulling it out and it got to be a big hassle. But doing it this way, I can minimize the number of... Uh, number of empty cells I need to have lying around. At some point I can automate it so that you know the, the oxygen and nitrogen could actually go over to my EBF setup down here and keep the EBF tanks full or even you know instead of doing it in those tanks I could just sh shuttle everything over to here and have it dump into these tanks but uh, I like having a little, little system set up the way it is that way I can kind of control and interact with it and keep an eye on it instead of just automating it and then ignoring it and then something goes wrong because I'm not paying attention to it. Anyways, I hope you guys uh, learned something. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, this is just a lot of fun to just sit here and watch it zipping the stuff back and forth. Uh, let me see. Let me turn this on. We'll see. We should have sent out a request. And we'll send out a request for two more hydrogen cells. We'll see them flying. See, there goes the request. Or there goes the output, actually. Should be... Some oxygen, hydrogen cells coming. Come on, hold up over here. Here they come. Here they come. Ding. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that is pretty funny. So, uh, anyways, if you have any questions, let me know. Have a good night.